Hi everyone, Jack Humphrey here. We're going to get started in just a minute. Gina is getting her audio recording started. I'm getting the main video recording started. And then we'll get going. Gina, let me know when you're uh, ready. Oh, sounds ready. Like, sounds like you're ready. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Sorry we're a few minutes late. Um, I won't bore you with why, but it was very exciting. If anybody wants to know, PM me later. Um, I'm Jack Humphrey, and you probably heard about this from a couple of different places. Um, G Plus, an event uh, page there, or Facebook, or uh, Stone Evans. Thanks to all the Stone Evans peeps that have come on today. Um, if you guys don't know me very well, me and Stone kind of got started at the same time, long, long, long ago on the web, <laughs> in the Warrior Forum, around 1997, 98. Yeah. Uh-oh, I see. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, I hope I have the dates right, but um, there's, a, there's a, a lot of history there. So thanks to everybody, and I'm glad to see all the PIPs people here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to keep us on schedule. Um, this is a, a preview for the Blog Systems Workshop, and um, I've got on the line with me Gina Gaudio graves and Ken Krell. And we're conducting this sucker. Gina and Ken, say hello. Well, hello yes. there, everybody. <laughs> Buenos dias, everybody. I want to get these guys to introduce themselves real quick after I do mine. Uh, most people here should know most everything uh, that I've been up to for the last long, long time. Uh, but this is a little bit of a quick review for those of you who haven't met me yet. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. And uh, I've had several books and courses and membership sites uh, over the last, um, mainly the last 12 years. And uh, after I did the Warrior Forum and tried to figure out what I was going to do online and what this online stuff was all about way back in the late 90s, um, I started in earnest to uh, apply what I had uh, learned. So uh, that started in 2002 with Power Linking, Your Way to a Million Hits was the whole title of the, uh, of the uh, book. <laughs> and it was basically, Google also started with us um, and in 98. So uh, before that, you know, we were all trying to figure out what Yahoo was all about and how to optimize for that. There was no Google yet. Boy, am I dating myself. Um, and I figured out during the, the, the years between then and 2002, uh, 2001, that Google was a search engine that could be uh, SEO'd or search engine optimized, which was nothing that you could do before that. There was no such thing as SEO until Google came along. Uh, there was a such thing as a advertising, and you could buy ads on Yahoo, but that was about it. Nobody could figure out how they ranked, and they didn't even really know how they ranked sites back then. Uh, but we found out, uh, me and uh, just a couple other people in the world found out that links were extremely important. And back then it was so beautiful because any old link would do from any old site. If, um, if Gina had a thousand links from a thousand different sites, and they could be the crappiest sites in the world, and I had a thousand one links from similar but one extra really crappy site or a good site, uh, I would outrank her in Google. It was as simple as that. Uh, and then, you know, we quickly figured out how to game that, and that's where power linking came from. Uh, in subsequent years, um, they've tightened up quite a bit, as you guys know. And you pretty much have to be a relationship marketer nowadays. You have to uh, be social. You can't really do the anonymous stuff that we did back then and sell products successfully. Uh, since then, of course, launched Blog Success, designed some software called Curation Soft. Um, started the Friday Traffic Report, which is the blog that I started to prove Google wrong in their terms of service in 2004, 2005. 
they said, just take care of your visitors. Um, you know, give them what they want, and they will uh, we'll take care of the rest. If they say really good things about you, we'll take care of the rest. And I was like, yeah, right, Google, because me and Google were kind of enemies at the time. I was always trying to game them. They were always trying to shut me down, and they were always winning in the end. Uh, so I, I said, all right, I'm going to put up a blog, and I'm going to tell stories. I'm going to talk about um, – I'm going to build relationships and all this crap that Google says in their terms of service. You take care of your people. We'll take care of your rankings. And lo and behold, they proved me wrong. Um, they proved themselves right. Uh, blogging uh, really, <laughs> really, really, really worked. So that led to the start of blogsuccess.com, teaching people how to – uh, do relationship marketing and content marketing uh, to get tons and tons and tons of search results for thousands of keywords, not just one big keyword or four or five or ten, but thousands. And to this day, Friday Traffic Report ranks and gets traffic from. This is important. Not the key. It ranks for thousands and thousands of keywords, but I only care about the ones that send traffic. Um, and it and the ones that send traffic is well over two thousand uh, different search phrases and keywords. Um, I've also been blogging at jackhumphrey.com and I also own a uh, local marketing firm for local brick and mortar businesses to get online and do what we do but send traffic and new customers to their local business through brickroadmedia.com. And all told, uh, very conservatively since I started uh, training people since 2002, very conservatively 1.5 billion targeted visitors to mine and clients and students' sites, and uh, probably quite a bit more than that. But that's just factoring in um, 100 of my students every year getting um, 100 uh, or a million uh, visitors each per year. So not really that big of a deal um, to get to that number, uh, especially with how long it's taken uh, or how long I've been online. <laughs> And then we have, uh, as part of this whole series, and really the leaders of this series, I'm, I'm a faculty member, I'm doing the presentation today, but this was really originated um, with Directions University and Boost Your Practice, Gina Gaudio Graves and Ken Krell. And Gina and Ken, you guys uh, want to do an introduction? Well, um, we're, we're just, we're just, I want to see just, which one fights and gets it first. We're just pausing. Well, you know, this... You know, today this is the Jack Humphrey show. So this is really about you, Jack, and how you can add value to everybody. So real briefly, I'm thrilled to be with you and to help support you guys uh, and support you, Jack, in a in an energetic way. But I am going to be just sitting back and listening with everybody else because there's a lot I can learn from you too. I'm a marketing strategist. I've been in the online and offline world for years, and um, I'm excited to have you on our faculty. Excited to have you participating with us in this program. Um, so I'm going to let, uh, let Gina do a quick, quick intro, and on with the show. Jack, how much do you want me to introduce myself? Oh, you just go for it. So hi, everybody. I am Gina Gaudio Graves. Most people know me as the JV Queen because of the many years that I brokered joint ventures and did some of the largest product launches on the Internet. But I was doing that years and years ago. I was one of the very first JV brokers online, as a matter of fact. And I did that job, that career, mainly because I had one big need. During that time, I was very, very sick. I spent almost 10 years in a hospital bed and wheelchair. And I needed almost $40,000 a month in medication to keep me alive. So I brokered joint ventures simply as a means to an end. But it turned out that that career really was one of the biggest gifts I've ever received because as a JV broker, I only made money when sales happened. And it didn't take me very long to realize that if all I did as a JV broker was to put people together for people who had products and services, connect them with people that had websites, traffic, and subscribers, and then I stepped back waiting for the sales to happen, Sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't work. If it didn't work, I didn't get paid, and I still needed this $40,000 a month in medication to keep me alive. So I had to find a way very, very quickly 
to ensure that every single time I organized a joint venture, it absolutely, positively had to work. And it was because of that giant need that I was able to develop the system that we teach today through Directions University. That system has several components, one of which is the relationship building system, and blogging is really the heart and soul of that particular system. So when I finally figured that out, continued brokering joint ventures, and 2005, my health had gotten even worse, and that year my doctors gave me just 12 to 18 months to live. Well, I'll make a long story short and just leave it at Six months after my death sentence, I had a complete and total miracle and not only recovered but was able to get out of my wheelchair and walk again, even though to this day I have no feeling in my legs and feet. And it was during what I call my miraculous transformation that I had several aha moments, the biggest of which was that I started to realize that I'd made a lot of money for a lot of people, myself included. I paid off a little over $6 million hard cash out of $9.9 .9 million worth of medical bills. But while I'd made a lot of money, I really hadn't done much at all to make a difference. So in January of 2007, I closed the doors to my consulting business forever and opened the doors to Directions University. And Directions used programs are really about four things. They're about helping you to get direction in your life and in your business. They're about showing you how to give direction to your prospects and customers. And in the end, my goal is really to help you impact the direction of the world. All of our programs help you with those four things. And relationships are a huge, huge part of the entire system. Even the story of how Ken and I came to meet and came to start working together is really a testament to the power of relationships. People don't come to the internet looking for stuff to buy. People come to the internet for one reason. They're looking for strangers with experience who have the solutions to the problems that they're trying to get rid of. You need to be seen as that stranger with experience. And what that really means to you is that people buy based on relationships not based on features. The unique blogging system that the three of us teach is one that will really help you talk with people, not talk at people, and will help you to really initiate the relationships that will turn into many, 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 many years of sale. In the end, you really want not just someone who's going to come and spend money with you one time, you want to build relationships with your customers so that your customers become your biggest source of sale. If you can turn every customer into a raving evangelist who not only buys everything you have to offer, but who has been transformed in such a powerful way that they can't talk about themselves without bringing up your name, your business will be very, very successful. And that's what you're going to learn how to do today. So Jack, I will turn it back over to you to help them better understand the power of relationships and how blogging plays a role in helping them to grow their business. Well, you better stick around because I'm going to use you. Is that okay? I absolutely would love to have you do that. You are going to be used today, but for a, for a very good cause because I really want everybody to get tons and tons and tons out of this. So I'm going to go um, through all of what we've promised you. Like you will remember on the page that you registered on, um, there were some stories that we wanted to tell you today. Now, this is kind of like the general one. I think it was set up for um, Gina's presentation. We all three do different presentations. And I have a story for each one of these points, but not the exact story that was uh, put here. I'm hoping that mine is just as good as each one of the ones that were here. But we are going to talk about how to get tons of subscribers. We're going to talk about how to get, uh, you know, a thousand is kind of an arbitrary number. You might not even need that uh, visitors per day. Uh, but I can show you exactly how that's been done. And I've got a story for you there to take you through that process. 
and uh, how to uh, maybe quadruple or even more your conversions because uh, I'm going to show you how I went from uh, a 10 to 11 or 12 percent opt-in rate um, not on sales but on uh, opt-ins to a 70 percent plus opt-in rate on a promotion that I did and then how that converted into seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales uh, just months after I built that that list so those are going to be my stories today and I keep saying stories because that's really what power of relationships is all about when you're building a relationship with uh, your target market when you know who they are what they want what they're all about and you're there to give that to them the way that that is done today is through stories telling stories on social on your site and we're going to go over how those things all tie together in a very successful blogging content marketing system uh, but first we really want to talk about what the unique perspective is on building businesses that Gina Ken and I share and uh, the very first thing in this I have from years and years of experience working with people directly one-on-one -on -one, clients uh, and also members of places like Blog Success and before that Content Desk, um, I've been handing people what I consider the golden keys to uh, success online. I go out, I figure out what works, I come back and I sell that experience to people and I show them exactly what I did and how I did it and how they can do it too. Despite that, so many people so many people, the vast majority of people, would join my membership site, take the training, and they wouldn't go anywhere with it. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sitting there saying, here's what you do, one, two, three, four, this is what you do with your site, no matter what niche you're in, whatever. And I've come to figure out over the years that I needed to be as much Tony Robbins as I needed to be Jack Humphrey. I needed to be someone who motivated, at least I thought at the time, I needed someone to be, you know, a motivator for people that they really can do it yes you can and patting people on the butt and making sure they you know uh, get out there champ and do it because people weren't getting out there and doing it they learned it and then they didn't do it for the very majority of the people that I worked with so that was very disturbing to me and it came to me a few years ago then that I really needed to focus on when I did any training that mindset is everything that you can mess up a lot a lot of things about marketing online about blogging online about building relationships you can screw things up and it's even an endearing trait that will draw people closer to you some people do it by design they they have ugly pages or they have um, they they make mistakes and they just don't fix them because it makes them real or they're too busy they got too much on their mind and that sense is conveyed through their message and people trust them more because they're like, oh, this isn't one of those super swanky, ultra clean and perfect corporate type things. This is a real person. So that even works for people. But the point is that you can screw up a lot of things. If your mindset isn't there, nothing else is. Then second, goal setting, building your business strategically. And, and Gina shines at this. Gina, you probably would want to talk about goal settings and do a lot better job uh, than me on that if you want to take that. Well, goal setting is absolutely critical. Goal setting really means build strategically, at least when you use my unique goal setting system. Most people do goal setting wrong. They start out with, okay, what are my goals for the next 30 days? What are my goals for the next year? What are my goals forever? Well, that's not really the way you want to do goal setting. You got to start with the end in mind. And that's what it means to build strategically. If you can start with what do you want to accomplish in the next one to three years or the next three to five years and write a list that is so detailed that when you describe that it looks like a 3D picture. There's lots of things that are implied in that. You want to make a million dollars a year? Well, there's some implications there. How many sales do you need to make at what price point to make that million dollars? How many visitors does it take to get that many sales to happen? Lots of implications. Well, if you can really use goal setting done that way to build your business strategically, you build a roadmap that allows you to succeed each and every time because you're succeeding on purpose, not by accident. And it's really the same process I use to accomplish the miraculous transformation 
that allowed me to overcome the death sentence from my doctors. It is no different in life than it is in business. But if you can really figure that piece out, you're going to succeed more often than not. Yeah. And uh, Gina has done wonders for me because a lot of times when somebody has been doing this for a while, and those of you on here that have, you, you'll know this right away, is we tend to get sloppy. We, we, we go, you know, we do something for a year and then we add things to it. We take things away to our business. Our, our focus is just kind of tweak and, and go in and out of focus a little bit as we look at new opportunities for business. We look at new things that we can incorporate in our business. And you really have to, take my word for it, if you haven't been doing this for a while, you need somebody like Gina to come around and slap you in the face a couple times and go, hey, you're all over the place, dude. And that she didn't do that to me, but through her, uh, through her training, I got an awful lot of that reminder and it really had the effect of splashing cold water on my face and going, crap, I'm, I really am spread too thin. My goals uh, then aren't the same as the goals now. I've, I really got to get my strategy back together. And as a coincidence, I've been doing that for the last year uh, with my business, kind of remaking all kinds of things and doing it the way Gina, uh, Gina's system works. It's just really, really awesome, very straightforward, and it's helped me an awful lot. The third point, of course. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Jack. Oh, yeah. You can use that if you want. <laughs> I am going to. Thank you very much. And then you have to put jackhumphrey.com at the bottom of it. Okay. So, Absolutely. <laughs> the third one is ex ex self-explanatory, and everybody's got their own twist on this. Um, everybody's heard this. Uh, but the thing is, what I try to do with people is kind of, do a little pattern interruption or something. Oh, God, another Napoleon Hill thing. I mean, how many times have we seen that, right? But we love it every time we see it. And we are taken back to the first time we saw that and, and really let it you know, sink in and absorbed it. And it is true. It is absolutely true. The examples of this are rife around the Internet, offline, people in your family, friends, networks. You've seen this happen. This has probably happened many times in your lifetime where you set your mind to something, you got it done, and it was your, your, you know, whatever your big success story is in life. It doesn't have to be in business. It just has to, you know, child rearing. You thought about bringing up this kid to be the best kid in the world, and you succeeded in your mind and in the minds of all family members, of course, but has, you've, you've set loose this kid on the world that's going to do great things or any number of stories. It doesn't have to do with business. You know that number three is true. You know it is. And that's why I like to pause there and just tell people, you know, don't just read the quote. Don't just think about that or any of the other number of quotes that have been based upon this one. Believe it. Know that you believe it. Remember that you do believe this uh, because it is extremely important. None of the rest of this presentation or anything else that you will ever learn about marketing online, relationship building, blogging, blog marketing, search engines, none of that matters if you don't believe they remind yourself that you do deep down we're born with that belief and that we've seen examples uh, in our brief history on this planet um, of this it just rife with examples we know this to be true all right all right so basically to make this much simpler because this is a topic relationship block um, blogging relationship marketing content marketing some people call it I started calling it that a long long time ago it's all about relationships, yes, and we're going to show you lots of examples today and stories. But I don't want anybody thinking that this is something to be, all right, I've got to get ready, I've got my pen and paper ready, and, and, and I hope you do, but don't be nervous about this stuff. Like, there's so much to learn, I'm going to freak out, I'm not going to be able to do this. We were all able to manage to do this, you know, me, Gina, Ken, and, and lots of people uh, so far on this call, but who would like to do it better, and lots of people that you've met online. Uh, have have been able to do this and get through uh, what seems on the outside as something that could be a very complicated thing and it's usually because we make it complicated on ourselves not because it has to be a complicated thing it really breaks down to mindset putting together a strategy and implementing that strategy now that may be coming off as maybe too simplistic but it's really not. You have to keep that at the core of every single thing you do. Everything that you do to plan your business, it has to match up with, is this exactly what I want to do? Is this adding too much? 
Should I do this? Should I do that? It should all come back to your strategy that you've set up so that you can implement, so that you don't get stuck on the part that most people seem to get stuck on. It was implementation, really following through after you've set your goals, after you've got your mind right, after you know uh, Napoleon Hill was right. All of these things come together, and then all of a sudden it's implementation time, and you find out some part of you, and this is true, I think, for everyone, was really in love with the idea of it more than you're comfortable with the idea of actually seeing it through. Now that you're right to implementation, oh my God, I've got to actually do this. And then you start freaking out on, on superfluous things like graphics or how do I make WordPress go or it's not right yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And that's always happening well past the time you should have launched a site or you should have launched a product or you should have launched a social campaign. That always happens well after that point. You never think you're ready. And, uh, and it's the people who just jump in with both feet and go, you know what, I might not be. Uh, my graphics might look crappy. My product not, might not be exactly the way I want it now, but it's good to go, i.e. Microsoft, um, <laughs> one of the biggest companies in the world who is famous for launching and then fixing their products later. Didn't hurt them at all. Uh, so you have to get over that part of it. It's all back down to mindset, strategy, and implementation, always, all the time. So in relationship marketing, the way I like to approach this is that today, I'm talking about today, I'm not talking about even six or seven months ago in some cases. This is training for what's going on on the web right now and how you can take advantage of it with relationship marketing, blogging, content marketing. And the fact is that people follow people. People don't follow Coca-Cola directly. You may be a fan of Coca-Cola's Facebook page, but you don't visit it every day. And if, if Coca-Cola does anything particularly interesting, you're going to learn about that 99% of the time through another person that you know on Facebook or on Google Plus or Twitter or LinkedIn who has seen something and they want to share it. That's the only way that we can keep up with anything now. We have to have a trusted network of people that we follow. So if they find anything, and because we're following them, we find that they tend to find really cool stuff and share and all that kind of, we like what's, what they share, we'll learn about brands and stuff and things to buy from other people. You know this to be true just because if you're on social media, you've already experienced it probably 20 times today. Um, before this webinar. So people follow people, not brands. Uh, people seek authority, like Gina was talking about earlier, uh, strangers, uh, strangers with authority, people whose sites you land on and you have that aha moment, wow, I'm finally what I've been looking for, somebody who really knows this topic that I'm interested in or this product line that I'm interested in or these issues or whatever it might be, you've all felt this. You've landed on a site, especially after a long search, and you just couldn't, you knew something had to be out there. You had a feeling that there was a person out there who understood something or, or who could deliver a message better than the rest, the way that you like to learn something or find out about information. And that person became an authority to you, an authority on that topic. And you bookmarked them, you, you passed around their stuff on social media, we're very, very excited about it. Everybody's been through that process. And the third point is that people are out there telling stories to sell stuff. People are selling all the time. People are selling themselves on Facebook who don't have an Internet business or a product or anything else, but they want to have a lot more friends. They want to be seen as somebody who's interesting. They want to be seen as someone to listen to, that people need to stand up and listen to. Everybody does that on Facebook, business people or non-business people. Everybody does it, so everybody's out there telling and selling all the time. When it comes down to businesses, we have to be very, very, very careful, and some of you may have experienced this, that you don't just go up to a social site and slap up a landing page link. Hey, come check out my new book. I mean, sometimes, and this is very, very restrictive, only sometimes is that ever okay. Most of the time, you need to tell some stories, you need to get people built, you need to build a relationship with people, get them to love you, then you can sell them anything you want, at least once. And if it sucks, well, at least you made that one sale. Uh, but I know that all of you guys are selling really, really cool stuff, and that's not going to happen to you. So those are 
very, very important points. You know that the big keyword on this page is people. One, two, three, four, that's a pretty good density. I'm trying to get that point across. People, 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 people. Okay, so advertising versus stories. We kind of started on that. Advertising is, hey, everybody come buy this cheap car on my used car lot. Just this week, we're going to give you a corn dog and some popcorn just for visiting or whatever. Nobody likes that. You don't like it. I don't like it. And the social web has made it very, very clear that they won't stand for it. You will be ignored with, with great, <laughs> with, with glee. People will not pay attention to you on purpose and really hard if it's possible to not pay attention to somebody really hard. So we figured out, and, uh, and everybody's seen examples of this, that stories really tell what is interesting about what people want to see, hear, read, um, and get to know the people behind the story and become trusting of that person as somebody who can really deliver. And this is why nowadays you can't hide behind a domain name or a brand. You just cannot do it. Uh, there has to be a person involved who's leading the charge who is someone who could be verified by other people as being someone that's a fan or uh, in their circles on Google Plus, and they trust them. Also, inclusive marketing is really important, and we'll talk about that on one of the next slides. And then another way to simplify all of this, and the only thing that you should really be concerned about now, especially if you're new, is social search and your website, not in particularly that order. But those are the three things that really combine to make relationship marketing work. Uh, your social is kind of like an outer ring of a, a series of concentric circles. That's where you pick up an awful lot of people directly from social, from different social networks. When you talk about uh, specifically uh, an article that you wrote on your website, and then they come back to your website, and your website is where the business of your business gets done. That's where opt-ins happen, leads are generated, sales are made, funnels are created, and funnel sales funnels that people go through and progressively are upsold to more and more uh, different products through autoresponders and things like that. But to keep it very simple, social search and website, and the reason search is in there is because Google, which is search, there is no other real, uh, it, nothing else on the web that really satisfies the actual definition of search anymore. Google watches everything that everyone says about you. And I say you and not your website because Google in Google Plus, and we're going to talk about that as well, uh, through Google Plus, knows you. It knows your website if you have a Google Plus business page, but it really only cares about, and you're only going to really get a lot of juice, uh, search engine juice from what people are saying about you and your articles on your website uh, by claiming your authorship with Google. So we're going to talk about exactly how to do that as well because it's one of the most important things you'll get out of today's or I want you to get out of today's presentation. Okay, advertising versus stories. People want to hear about interesting things before they ever get close to a product advertisement of any kind. Uh, and there's two different kinds of storytelling that you can do uh, to get people to build that relationship, to get them to the point where they're ready to, they may not even be asking, hey, you got a product to buy? And it sounds stupid, but I've had that happen. I know Gina's had that happen, probably Ken has, where we've, over delivered a little bit on the storytelling it's like hey is there anything to buy here because they're so if you do a really good job and you probably have to experience this firsthand to totally believe it but you know maybe you will at the end of this after I've established my relationship with you and you trust me a little bit more through my stories but I've had I've been telling stories out there and they're like I've had JV's come up to me as early as as, as recently as last week and say hey dude do you have anything to promote and I um and at the time I didn't I was like, uh, well, no, not yet. I have this thing coming up or whatever. And they were just so shocked. They were like, it seems like you're having a launch or something because you're out there. No, dude, I'm telling stories and I do that for a living and that's what I do so that whenever I want to launch a new product or do anything uh, like that, I've already got the crowd built in to do that. Um, just as I was able to bring all of you on here today, um, because I've been telling stories on social, short stories, ongoing things, things that I'm interested in, 90% informative, maybe 10 to 5% uh, self-promotional, completely self-promotional. That's the ratio that you want to hold on, on social. I've been telling stories, and I've been keeping people engaged with me 
uh, regardless of whether I have a product to sell at the time or not. And currently, right now, I, I hadn't. You know, as of last week, I, I was like, I don't know. Uh, get, a, get a hold of me later, which is something when somebody comes and offers you a JV, as Gina can attest, and you don't have a product, that could be a bad thing. If you don't have your strategy down, that could freak you out. Wait a minute. I don't have anything for you to promote, and you just asked me if, I, if, if you could send to your list of 150,000. <laughs> Does that sound kind of crazy, Gina? She's muted. She's coming back it, to unmute. It sure does sound <laughs> crazy, Jack. And they probably sit there and go, what is he, nuts? Yeah, that's kind of what I got. I got that from Frank Guerin last week. Um, he just popped up and said, hey, dude. Well, yeah, I mean, they assume that you're in business to do business, right? Yeah. So if you don't have anything for them to sell for you, how are you in business? Well, I'm in business uh, always through my uh, marketing firm, and uh, well, I know that, and I'm you know that, but and, they don't get it. Yeah, they they don't they didn't get it. But I knew that I also had the, the reason they came to me is because of my activity, and my activity indicated to them, like you know, some people will pick up on this stuff and they'll try to fake it, and um, and it might have come across as as that to people who hadn't been following me. Who thought, oh man, he must be ramping up for a campaign of some sort to sell a bunch of products because he's so active. What they didn't see is that my history is that I'm always active. I'm never not active on social. And uh, if anything, I've been less active on my blog creating new content. But social stays up. The activity stays up because I use that so I can engage it at any time. Just like I did for this webinar when I wanted you all to show up. And um, and the only reason that a lot of you heard about this is because of my engagement with you and the and the things that you're following that I'm doing. So note too that this is something that people do a lot, and they'll they'll give a presentation and they'll they'll sound like a real big expert and everything, but they can't point to any of the stuff that they're actually doing that they're trying to teach you on the webinar. So that's what I'm going to be spending the rest of this doing is showing you what I'm doing and proving to you that I'm doing it in the first place and that I have something from the front lines of internet marketing to actually bring back and show you with you know real actual uh, case studies it's really really important so anyway that's why everybody's here is that you know I don't go out and advertise stuff even when I do have stuff to advertise it's a it's it's to give something first you know give and give a lot let people walk away from an experience with you with everything that they need to do whatever you taught them and not hang anything back behind a paywall or anything. You know, that's that's what has to be done on in this day and age. And it's not just me saying that. It's it's you guys and your experience with other people who have done that before. We've all got good experiences and bad experiences with things that we've bought, training that we've done. And you know why the good experiences happened. And you know that what I'm saying relates to you just because you've had that experience. You don't have to trust me on that. Well, and understand that you're not just creating an experience when you do a webinar, a teleconference, or a live event. Blogging is all about creating the experience. You're just doing it in a different media. So it's yeah. as important to understand that from a blogging standpoint as it is from a webinar delivery standpoint. Exactly. And, they, and it all ties together. You, you're telling, basically, the Internet made things really complicated. Back in the day, before the Internet, you had TV, radio, newspapers, and, uh, and yellow pages. And those are the places that you had to tell stories to get business, uh, to your brick and mortar, you know, not to your website. The Internet makes it really complicated because there's way more opportunity and lots more channels to tell your story on. So on my social storytelling, I mean, I'm doing it at 140 characters at a time, or I'm doing it on uh, Facebook, very short, or, or Google+, Plus as long as I want on Google+. Plus, They don't have any limit. Um, but I, I reserve my longer stuff for my blog uh, and just go to Google+, Plus and, and, you know, interact and, and uh, you know, tell short stories to lead them to the bigger story. So you're on all kinds of different mediums. So the blog is the core of your universe. That's... Um, Really, the, the the latest statistic on WordPress is now it's up to 18% of the web is being powered by WordPress, which may not sound like much, but you have to think about how big the web is. And the fact that some of the really, really big sites, I mean, Washington Post and, um, 
you know, all these different gigantic, ginormous sites, and then all of our sites are all on WordPress. That's huge. It's massive. And uh, people are telling us that's how they found that that medium is the best way to tell a story. Google loves it. It's easy to use for everybody. It doesn't take that much to learn it. And, uh, and it's extremely well respected by Google because it powers 18%. I mean, Google runs into it every other site they go to. Okay, so to get to keep keep on track here, inclusive marketing is uh, basically that today people want to be a part of the story and become so through social media engagement tactics on your website, um, or social media and engagement uh, tactics on your website. And your 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 website needs to be infused. Your blog needs to be completely infused with social. And you may find that your market is most responsive on Facebook or there's more of your market on Facebook. So that would lead you to believe, well, I need to have uh, Facebook comments instead of WordPress default comments on my site. And you would be right. Um, the first thing that I do on a brand new site for a client is turn off the WordPress comments. Um, even if we haven't decided yet what kind of commenting system they're going to have, but it's going to be a social commenting system. When you comment on someone's blog um, who is uh, using the WordPress default, it doesn't go anywhere. And the reason that blog commenting has gone down so much in uh, the last few years is that nobody wants to talk about something in a vacuum. They want their friends to see. They want to share things with other people. They want to look good commenting, and they can't do that if your site's only getting 100 visitors a day or 1,000 visitors a day, and Facebook gets millions and millions of visitors every second. You know, and a lot of uh, their friends never get to see any of the discussions that they're on in around the web. So that's why that's a precisely why uh, blog commenting has died since social media started. So we've engaged uh, people on our websites by making sure that the conversations they want to have are ha they're having them in the places they want to have them. Even if they leave the comment on your site, it's still going back to Google Plus. It's still going back to their people on Facebook. It's still going to people on Twitter. So that makes them a part of a story. That makes them a much more motivated person to do the actions that you want them to take, like like your business page on Facebook or circle you on Google+. And um, it also goes the other way. You engage people uh, through your content by saying, look what so-and-so did here. I'm going to show an example of a post that I did uh, where that was extremely successful just last week on a blog that I have kind of let be dormant for a while which is great because if it was a great if it was where it was before you would say well that's natural for you because you already had a whole bunch of traffic so big deal well this one's actually been dormant for a while and I got to wake it up on a, in a really big way that I'm going to show you in a bit okay so the social search website this is the final in the three uh, bullets in this section so uh, today Trust comes first by building a relationship through mainly, usually, through social. It can happen sometimes somebody's not going to see you on social. They're going to do a web search. They're going to do a search on Google. And they're going to find your stuff, and that stuff is going to usually include, you know, your social sites and your website. And if it's a, a deep piece of content that they're looking for or something that indicates to Google that the keyword is, is important for them to show you as number one or two or number five with your website, then that's where they're going to come and see you. And this is why social and your website have to be completely tied together because they will then realize, well, I have a social account. I like this article. I'm going to put it on Facebook. I'm going to put it on Google+, Plus, where you encourage them to do so um, because it's so easy for them to do. You make, that, make it easy for them to do that. The authority comes from your site content and what people say about you. So... Because of the way Google works today, which is different than they even worked two weeks ago, but it gets more and more reliant upon social and what people say about you, their algorithm, and how, in terms of how they rank you in the search uh, rankings for the keywords that you want, the rankings come from the signals that are sent by, by your fans about you, by people who say, this is really great, you should go check it out on Twitter and leave your link. Uh, this is really great. You should go check it out. I was really impressed by blank, blank, blank on Google+, Plus, especially on Google+, Plus, because Google can see absolutely every word 
of of everything that's shared on on Google Plus. It's their social network, and they also happen to own the search engine on the web. So think about that. Put two and two together. Every time you get a plus one for anything, whether it's for you sharing something, it's a piece of content specifically on your site. That's all a vote for you to rank higher for something in their in their search. It really just comes and down to that. It's really, it's really important for them to understand. When you and I first got our start, we didn't have search engine. Then Google comes around, Yahoo comes around. Back then, we could get ranked with nothing but backlinks if we had our content optimized the right way. Today's internet is very, very different. If all you have is your content is optimized the right way on your site, you've got backlinks coming back to that content, you are not going to rank if that's all you've got. Social is the key to getting ranked well on any search engine. And I don't know that very many people really get that. How about you, Jack? No, it's it, there are articles out there, and I see that they're being pretty well read on some really big sites. They're starting the the buzz is starting to happen, but it's not caught on. A lot of people I see are still operating under the old rules, and that's very unfortunate because Google doesn't give you any credit for operating under any rules except the ones that exist today. And the ones that exist today are that Google has figured out a way to determine what real people are, and they're very. They're, they're, they're sticklers about who can sign up for Google+. Plus. You can't just sign up for just under any old name. It's very difficult to make fake accounts there and keep them active. And even if people do uh, once in a while, Google has a way of factoring in, okay, there's a certain percentage of this that might be junk and somebody might be trying to spam us. Because and the reason I'm talking about spam is that you need to understand that you have to care about what Google does. You have to care that they make, you know, four to $10 billion a quarter and that they continue to do so. You have to care about that because it gives you all the clues that you need and how to act out there to do your relationship marketing that sends the signals back to Google that you are an authority, that you need to be in the top 10, that you need to be number one. You have to care about Google in terms of how they're doing things because, and it's very, very simple now. It used to be actually more complicated. The stuff Gina was just talking about Man, we could go for hours. There were whole huge forums set up that are ancient forums now. They've got over you know hundreds of thousands of blo of posts in the forum uh, over the years on all kinds of topics about search, and it's so much easier now. If you understand social search website, if you understand those three things and how they work together, especially where when it comes to Google and Google Plus, and the signals that people you need to generate through your content and through your networking and leveraging like if I go to Gina and say hey I, I need a little boost I just had a post could you because uh, I know Gina carries a lot of weight especially on on Facebook and she can just by you know the flip of a button um, send a whole bunch of direct traffic to me but also send a very very important signal to Google because this person on Facebook has a it has it has their own little Facebook ranking in Google's mind, and they're more important and more verified and authoritative than even uh, the the other people that have been mentioning Jack's new post today. So I do that. That's leveraging and, and understanding Google is really simple. What makes Google all of its money is pretty basic. Google is all about serving their searchers to the best of their ability. And if you really understand the implications of that, what does it mean for Google to serve their searchers to the best of their ability? It makes it so much easier to really get ranked. They want stuff that engages people. Yep. They know that people have different learning styles. Some want to read, some want to watch, some want to listen, some want to look at pretty pictures. If you can really give them what they need to serve their searchers better, they're going to go right to the top of Google every time. And the only way they have to measure it is to see if people are talking about you in social. Mm -hmm. It's something, it's a dream come true for Google because all these years Simple. there was, there was this, this cold war between us and them. You know, either it was gray hat marketing or black hat marketing yeah. where somebody would find a way to game Google. They'd come out and then, and I was part of this too. I mean, that was the name of the game back then because we felt it was unfair 
how some people with a whole bunch of money, and it really was, it was a battle of money and then how the rest of us were going to get there. But these guys with money always ended up in the number one spot because they could hire SEO teams to do that really hard stuff back then that needed to be done to rank in the top ten. And then we had to figure out other ways. So we often ended up trying to game the system. We'd go and then we'd sell the idea as a product. And it would work for a little while. But the multi-billion dollar juggernaut would always, with the smartest people in the world, uh, from MIT and everywhere else on their payroll, would always defeat us in the end. And it was just a terrible treadmill where, you know, some of the things might require us to have 100 different sites up if you were into that kind of thing at the time. And, and 100 different sites just completely got knocked out of Google. It sucked. It was just not a way to exist. It's so much better now because all you have to do is be a real person under the, under the rules of what a real person is and, and, and specifically pertaining to Google and, um, and, and just rock people's worlds, you know, with stories. And, uh, and I'll give a broader definition of stories, and there's all kinds of different things we can talk about there, but basically I'll call it stories in short content really cool content that people want that they desire that they need that they're searching for and being the one to provide it there because so many people don't get this yet it's such a a crazy amount of uh, opportunity for the people who are on this call because most people just don't get it or they think it's too hard what I'm getting ready to show you that they're they're just not gonna do it they're gonna try to game the system or whatever and they don't provide quality so uh, you know they're not going to be your competition. competition. You're only ever really in competition with a few people, uh, usually in most markets. Not with a, a hundred thousand people, just because there's a hundred thousand search results. The only people that are competitive to you are the guys who are above you in the top ten, and that's it. And you know, so think about it in terms of that. It makes things a lot easier. Gina, did you want to say something, or did you just drop the phone? Neither. That was Ken echoing, not me. Okay. Ken, did you want to say something or did you just drop the phone? Okay. So anyway, my first story is about a little black book. And it's a, it's a case study from 2007. Uh, some of the people on this uh, webinar probably actually remember this. Um, but I'll tell you how you ended up downloading this book and loving it so much. It wasn't just because of me. Uh, I leverage people to tell stories about it as well. But the story of it is I created something that I was going to sell for $197. And uh, up until the week that I was going to launch it, it was going to be sold for $197. It's when social started. And everybody was really confused. And there were a million social sites. It wasn't. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, and a couple of others. It was tons of them. And we didn't know where to go or what to do or, or, or how it could help search engine rankings or get more traffic. We just didn't know at the time. It was new to everybody. Well, I had figured out some things that people could probably use, which is here's all the social sites in this book. Here's where you sign up to get a profile on them because the name of the game back then was just have a profile on all these sites. And Google would be like, whoa. All right, that's a link, that's a link, that's a respected place, that's a link, and we were ranking because of that. That didn't last, but at the time it was extremely important, and the people had a feeling that there was some kind of a system, and so I put it together. I put it together and thought I was going to charge 197 for it because I knew it was better than the other products that were out there that were similar, very early products. There were only two or three others out there talking about social authority, and, um, and because it was so new, they were selling them. Nobody was giving this stuff away. And I'm like, you know what? I would rather have a list, a big list. I think I want a really, really big list of, and, and charge the list that I have up a lot more. And let's give this thing away for free. Let's try that. And my partners at the time were like, no, dude, this is, we can make a huge amount of money selling this thing for 197 It should be for more. And when people, look at, you know, the sales letter you created and all that, I'm like, no, screw the sales letter, all that. Let's put up an opt-in page and let's give it away. Now, in the context of that moment in history, everybody else was charging for this. They were giving webinars and paid workshops and, 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 uh, and books like this. They were, they were selling them. I, and I came on, and people knew me. I had a little bit of a reputation. And they were like, wow, if Jack put this together based on his other stuff, this you is probably really good. a lot of people off, Jack. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 I'm opportunistic. I'm, all entrepreneurs are. You know, if everybody's selling it, give it away and then sell something even more valuable, you know, later. And that's exactly what this formula was. I didn't know how it was going to work. It was the first time I'd ever tried it. So uh, it turned out in about a month I got 50,000 plus subscribers, summer of 2007. In the fall of 2007, largely because of that new fresh list that I had built with that tactic, I did about three quarters of a million in sales uh, for my products, not even affiliates. That doesn't even call, account for affiliate products or anything else that I sold to the list. And it all had to do with value currency and being opportunistic, uh, seeing something and going in a direction that nobody had gone yet and you always have opportunities to do this and when you've built a relationship where you can send out a mail to key people like if Gina and I knew each other personally back then I would have definitely sent her a mail and say hey can you talk about this I don't want to be the one to talk about it I see all these other bloggers out there they write books and they're on Amazon and they, they have all these people talking about it and they do huge sales so I wanted people to do the same thing about my ebook, and so I would go give it to people. And uh, I had an affiliate program, and nobody signed up for it. Maybe one or two people signed up. They were just like, "No, man." I promoted the hell out of it, Jack, and I had no affiliate link. It was just such a valuable thing to have that it made me shine to tell everybody how they could get it. Yeah, yeah, and it was, and and, and that happened all the time. I, basically, my job during the first couple of weeks was just I had Google alerts set up, and I was just watching Google for any new mentions of Authority Black Book because people were just picking it up and blogging about it. They were opting into my list, getting the book, reading it, and being moved to do blog posts about it. You, you know, that's not something that's very common. We'd all love that to happen all the time. The only way to make it happen is to understand that you have to do something of extreme value. You have to have a relationship. You have to be out there always building relationships, networking. It's got to be current, very, very current. And um, it's you got to be taking advantage of some sort of opportunity in the market at the time. And you will start to see really, really cool things happen. It might not be an ebook because ebooks now are not such a, you know, you have to do something really special. It's not about giving someone an ebook or whatever method that you deliver the information. They're after the information. But ebooks aren't as sexy as a medium anymore. Some people are thinking, well, that's a lot of reading. I don't want to do that. So a lot of people do, you know, nowadays they'll do uh, webinars or they'll do, uh, you know, long workshops, things like that for paid products or for giveaways or whatever. Because uh, people are much more visual. And nowadays it's really easy to work with video and the web and um, pretty much everybody knows how to do it. And back then, it was not as easy, even in 2007, to uh, get a decent video together <laughs> and get it online and all that kind of stuff. I don't think Amazon's um, storage service was even in existence back then. To you know, and and videos ran ran like crap on our sites, on our regular hosting or regular servers. So what I did was um, I had an awesome offer. I put a refer a friend bonus on the second page. So people, if they wanted this really, really killer bonus, and I can't even remember what it was, uh, they uh, would have to tell three friends, uh, give us their email address, and have an email come out from our autoresponder to them, hey, I just checked out this Authority Black Book, you really got to see it. The only reason that 50,000 plus opt-ins happen is because of that. And uh, I, I won't even tell you what that script was because it's irrelevant now. There are much better, newer ones now for WordPress and things like that. You don't, you don't need to know what I used. But Refer a Friend was a big deal, and it tripled the opt-ins, at least tripled the opt-ins. Um, so it was a really important uh, thing about that. So <laughs> that's how I did the opt-ins. That's my story of, uh, of getting a lot, a lot, a lot. Of, these are all double opt-ins, by the way. Um, it was all going through Aweber. You can't use Aweber unless you, uh, you know, do double opt-in. So, um, and the the, tr the trick there was, uh, you don't give somebody a download page after they opt in. You only give them if it, if it's something that can be delivered via email. You give it to them after they've double opted in. They can't, they can't even get it. So they can't fake it and just get to another page um, and download your thing and not actually opt into your list by ignoring your double opt-in that goes to them. So make sure that if you're going to run a campaign like that, that that's something that you consider. 
Uh, Gina, anything else to add about the Black Book stuff? No, but the whole idea of a referral friend, you were one of the first significant promotions to really use that. And at the time you came out with that, I was doing a little JV giveaway in the self-improvement niche. It used to be called 117 Self-Improvement Gifts. And it was an ordinary JV giveaway. We had about 300 JV partners who all gave gifts, who all promoted the heck out of it. They had brought me about 10 or 11,000 subscribers in about two weeks. Seeing your promotion made me go, hmm, I wonder if we could do even better with those 10 to 12,000 people going to tell their friends. So I borrowed a little trick from you, went and did it, and that nice little list turned into 52,000 subscribers in under 30 days all because of the power of having them refer three friends to get something else. Really, really big deal that isn't used often enough today, I think. You totally stole my idea. It worked great. Thank you. <laughs> I love it when people steal my ideas. Um, okay, so how about a story about search? Everything's about stories, right? And you don't want to learn about all the junky technical, you know, IT techie, garbage, geeky stuff. You want to just know uh, that, that the stuff that you've been hearing about on the web is actually real. And there's just so precious few many people out there that are telling you those stories. Like, what? show me something that shows me that this stuff you're talking about is real. So I'll tell you about this. Um, the Friday Traffic Report is something that uh, I did for many, many years. It's kind of on mothballs right now. Um, but it was tied to a podcast that I ended up doing uh, three or four years with uh, partner Jim Stroud. And it eventually ended up as a Google Hangout, uh, weekly Google Hangout on Fridays. And it, it was just a, a podcast based on tech and gadgets and, uh, you know, everything related to marketing and blogging and content marketing, but also talking about how gadgets affected how people came to your site. Um, it came, it, Friday Traffic Report was instrumental in teaching a lot of people about how to bridge the gap between, well, now we've got to worry about these mobile sites. <laughs> What's up with the mobile sites? And, you know, and how are people seeing our stuff? And how can we get them to see our stuff on a mobile phone in the way that we want them to see it? You know, my site looks like crap and all that. So we were talking about, you know, how things ended up on tablets. Tablets came around in 2010, that kind of stuff. It always still related back to marketing. And I always put really cool stuff up on, or I tried to always do it. It's not like I hit a home run every time. You don't hit a home run every time. Uh, but I always was after cool stories to tell on Friday Traffic Report about how to do this and how to do that, whether it was with WordPress or uh, any kind of a marketing tactic or whatever. And I eventually published enough, um, you know, over a year's time, I think I did about 1,300 posts, which might sound like a lot. Um, and it's not necessary for everybody to do that. I'm not saying that that's a rule that you have to do that to achieve this. It's just what it ended up being. As I was learning the best kinds of things to publish and the best kinds of stories to tell, I had to tell a bunch of bad stories to get to the good ones. I didn't know which ones people were going to really resonate with. So, uh, you know, anybody nowadays wouldn't have to do 1,300 posts in one year. But, um, but I did at the time, and I, it ended up being... The, the more words you put on your site, the more keywords you can rank for. Sounds ob pretty obvious now, but at the time it was like, well, how is Google really looking at us? And does every single post or every single page on our site really matter? And quite frankly, yes, it does. The way people were going for rankings, even at the time I started the Friday Traffic Report, was I want to get ranked for the top five keywords in my market. Really, really important to everybody at the time that they get they get ranked in the top 10 for their top five or 10 keywords which really made search small for everybody because if you and a hundred thousand other people are in the golf niche and you're all going after the same five or ten keywords well you can understand how so many people got burnt out and just didn't continue with their business around golf because everybody was going after the same thing nobody would really heard about long tail yet and long tail being just very specific phrases. Like, I don't want anybody landing on my golf site if all they put in was golf clubs. Honestly, I don't. Even if I sell a lot of golf clubs, I don't want somebody. I have no idea what they're really after. I don't know what kind of golf clubs they're after. I don't know if they're looking to buy or they're just looking for a story or whatever. 
I always want people hitting my site who are looking for a story because that's exactly what I'm going to give them on that site, which means that I'm going to have a lower bounce rate. They're not going to flip back to Google within 30 seconds because I'm not giving them what they thought they, they were going to see. I know what they want to get because I'm providing it and I'm going for keywords that are like very specific for that, like how to do um, a guide to Google Plus marketing, guide to Google Plus marketing. I mean, somebody would have to type that whole thing in, but I know exactly what that person wants. It's very clear that that person knows exactly what they want, and I want them to get exactly what they want when they get to my site. I don't want them bouncing away. I don't want to you know, do any tricks um, because that affects my rankings. If Google sees somebody come back and search again in 30 seconds after they've gone to your site, that's called a bounce. That lowers your rankings, basically. There's a lot of technical stuff behind that, but all you need to know. I'm not leaving out anything important. All you need to know is that you want people to come from Google and stay on your site for a, at least a minute or more. And on average, a cu couple minutes, three minutes is really great. And not just the page that they land on, but they want to go. Google wants to see them go through a few pages. So if you're not storytelling, you can't do that. If you're not, not only that, you, Jack, you can't do it. Go ahead. Not only that, but it changes traffic into traffic that converts. If all you're doing is getting people coming from just plain old golf clubs, you'll get plenty of traffic, but it's not going to convert. Yeah. And I don't really care to get traffic that doesn't convert. I want to build relationships that turn into customers forever who then bring their friends to me too. So the long tail keywords are really the key to getting that traffic that converts. Exactly. Okay, so, wow, Gina, how did it get to be 110? Okay. <laughs> I don't know, but I keep hearing you breaking up. I don't know if anybody else is. If you guys are hearing Jack breaking up, let us know, please. Yeah, I might switch to phone Yeah, here. Diana says that, too. You might want to, Jack, because you've cut off okay several yeah. times and it's always right in the middle of a good part of a story I know well you talk to them for just one second I'll get on the phone and we'll get going welcome to go to webinar web events made easy marketing topics every single thing that Jack has talked about Terry applies 100 percent in the internet marketing niche and outside of the internet marketing niche so I'm trying to remember what he was talking about when you asked that question. Do you remember what he was talking about? And I can give you some great examples outside of IM. Golf, gotcha. When he comes back, I'll make sure that in his future examples, he talks more about things outside of IM. The reason he does keep going back to IM is more that it's what he knows, it's what he's done. In DU, 99% of our students are not in the internet marketing niche. And I'll tell you, every single thing that Jack has shared applies even more outside of the IM space than inside of the IM space. In the internet marketing niche, we've got so much competition. Outside of it, the only people that really know what they're doing are so few and far between. So it's, it's really helpful to understand that knowing what Jack is sharing with you today really does make you one of like 0.1% of the people in your niche. And yes, Fonda says you can turn off double opt-in in AWeber. Yes, you can. I don't recommend doing that for subscribers. I do use single opt-in with AWeber, but only in one instance, and that. Welcome to go to webinar web events. I will sometimes turn off my double opt-in. But if I'm just getting someone to opt in for a free report, like the Little Authority Black Book, that one they're going to have to double opt-in to get. I'm back. Gina, can you hear me?
Welcome to GoToWebinar. Web events. Hey guys, sorry, back. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Fred, Joseph, yes, Rhonda. Oh, thank goodness. So I think um, I think we lost Gina. Maybe it was her connection that was screwing me up, man. So now I'm on my cell phone. Okay, but well, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. All right, good. So I'm back. Sorry about that. I don't know how I lost my connection. Yeah, I think it was you screwing everything up, and everybody blamed it on it me. It must have been. Must have been. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to move a little bit quicker now because I really thought this was going to be a 60-minute thing. I, I honestly did. I'm going to restart the audio, too, the audio recording. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so a story about search. Um, you guys understand curation. I sh I'm sure you've heard about curation before, and covering your news and your niche, and it's a really easy way to create content that you don't have to write all yourself. Yeah, blame it on Gina, typical man. <laughs> we have to. It's in the rule book. They, they went over that at the man meeting last week. Um, so Search wants to know if people like your stuff. To get people to like your stuff, you either have to write a whole lot of content and um, you know really, really impress people, uh, or do a lot of work on videos or uh, do a really, really great podcast, all of which take a lot of time. And you can't do that every day. Now, you'll see examples of people out there that do, and um, those people have staffs of, you know, a staff of people to help them. You know, think about CopyBlogger, ProBlogger, um, any of the big sites out there, Huffington Post, those kinds of sites all have staff and volunteers who are more than happy to write for them for free, which is a great tactic. It means you don't have to write it. Uh, but you have to attract really good people to do that. So you still have to know what your market loves and you have to give it to them over and over, but there's different ways to do that so that you're not on the hook for all this content. And curation is one way to do that. And I'm getting ready to show you a post to show you an example about how all of this stuff works from a curation standpoint where I only wrote a little bit. Um, everything else was provided by other people and those key other people actually were instrumental and sending Google those social signals I've been talking about in order to get things ranked. So it's really exciting because it's an example from last week, not last year or a month ago, but last week, and it's still actually in play. It's still actually in progress. Look, Keith even went away. Okay, so you guys are having a little bit of trouble. Maybe it was go to meeting, go to webinar. Okay. Let's go to the next slide because I think that's where I get into. Yeah. So the plus one story is basically a slide that I slipped in before the, the, the bigger story is that I want everybody to walk away today with one thing if nothing else. And that is that you need to have your, your self-claimed Google authorship claim for your blog. You have to. Participation is required in Google Plus whether your market is there or not. So many marketers have made the crucial, terrible, terrible mistake of uh, thinking, well, my market's not on Google+. Plus. I heard it was a ghost town. I heard it wasn't important. I'm not going to go there. Huge, massive mistake. If you weren't on any other network but Google+, Plus, you'd probably be doing better today in search than you are doing great on all the other social networks. That's how important it is. There's a plug in and you've got to get plus ones in those social signals regardless of whether a sizable amount of your market that you're targeting for your product or service or content is there. It's, re it's irregardless of that. And most people have failed themselves on, on that terribly. Uh, I've got instructions to check 
PatHumphrey.com on how to uh, claim your authorship, one of the more recent posts, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about or not. For that very reason that G Plus is owned by Google, who is a search engine, to put it simply. Um, little story about conversion, uh, going from 50 to 70 percent opt-in rates. Um, what you have to do to get somebody to convert to an opt-in to build your list is prepare them. You can't send somebody to a landing page cold. If you've done that before, you're the kind of you're you, you know what a campaign is like. You know, people telling stories about you, and you're telling stories about the stuff that you do and the things that you know. Um, you start sending people to landing pages after that, after you've done that prep work, and you get 70 plus percent opt-in rates. So that doesn't mean you're going to get a huge conversion on, it's not going to mean anything to your conversion sales. Uh, the two don't have that much to do with each other, the conversion. Opt-in, it was just a really great offer. Your But haven't been exposed to your product really that hard yet, and then when you you know whip out that that really special deal or whatever it is uh, to buy your entry level product, say if you have like uh, an information business or uh, something small, or every business has an entry level, uh, even cars, you know the the advertise price for a car and then once um that's the difference every um, but you don't want to splash cold water on people and expect good results so no matter how good your landing page looks or how um, you know great your opt-in form or, or the offer or any they warming people up to be warm when they get to your opt-in pages. And uh, so to go from 5% to 70% is nothing if you understand that concept and you start working toward that goal today, to start today. What can I do to better my process? Or if you're just now thinking about how all of this stuff works, keep this in mind so that when you get to that point, you understand how to do way, way better than most people are out there talking about. A lot of people are really excited about converting, you know, 20%, 25% of, of their visitors to opt-in subscribers. That's not exciting at all to us. That's not, it's not even exciting to me until it gets to 70%. Uh, and if it's not there, then I know I have to work on the process of relationship building and the kind of traffic that I'm sending to that page, what their mindset is, uh, what context I have placed them in because of my relationship building before I put them on that page. Otherwise, I'm just getting bad traffic. Okay, and then finally, a prospective subscriber, lead, new client, or customer needs something. They need something before they get to an opt-in page. That means warming them up, getting to know who you are, getting them to like your stuff, all that kind of thing. They need something before they ever ask to opt in for something, just to get that kind of conversion. Okay. The Authority Black Book converted at 70% uh, because of the following. The thing that I had was much needed, wanted, desired. Not necessarily what people actually needed, what they really, really wanted at the time. I sold them what they needed afterwards uh, when they found out that what they wanted was what they really needed. <laughs> and long story short, the Authority Black Book turned out to be the leader for a piece of software that made everything in the Authority Black Book a lot easier once people realized how much work it was. So um, it turned into money right quite right away. I had to write that software really quickly to answer the demand that the book created that I didn't know it was going to create. We told stories about the topic before blindly sending people to the page and other people told, told stories about it for free. And a great example, and Gina always reminds me, she's one, we didn't even know each other then, but when the book came out, she didn't sign up for the affiliate program or anything. She just talked about it, sent it to her list. Um, and that's because I, I leveraged most of those people's support. And then just a bunch of other people just came in. 
the uh, tools of the trade are basically WordPress. There's no other website platform to publish your content on. You know, there's no need. You, one of the things that people come to webinars like this is to get some simplification in their life, to get things simplified. WordPress, that's all you have to worry about. There are no other platforms to build a site with. Just forget about everything else. And you have to have your own domain because you can't use WordPress.com. Uh, you can't do certain things on that that you can with your own domain. Uh, you don't have to know why or how or anything right now, but later on, once you do increase your experience level, you're going to want to do some things, trust me, that you will not be able to do on WordPress.com. If you have a WordPress.com site right now, it's very, very easy to have it moved to your own domain later, and then you can do all that cool stuff. Uh, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, profiles and pages. Absolutely required. Have to have them, whether you use Twitter or not. You can have your Facebook go to Twitter automatically. You post to Facebook, it posts to Twitter. And vice versa. If you have to use Twitter because of your market and the way that you're really getting a lot of traction, then you post to Twitter and have Twitter post to Facebook for you. Um, LinkedIn, Google Plus is absolutely essential. LinkedIn is, if you're a B2B, really, really essential. Business to business marketer. And YouTube is part of the Google Plex. You have to have that. Yeah, that's a good point. You don't have the full control of, uh, of your content at WordPress.com. They can shut you down, and that's absolutely true. Um, that's from Keith. Thanks for that reminder. Yep. You've got to have control of everything in your business. That's why you need, you know, something easy to use like WordPress, and you've got to have your own domain. Lot. Not only that, but with WordPress.com, you lose some of the control on your branding, too. You're really branding WordPress.com, not you. Yeah. Or even worse, blogger. I can't believe anybody still uses yeah, that. Yeah, even worse. Things. And and I'm just you know what I do when I see links to stuff on uh, an important issue that I'm following, maybe um, um, politics or environmental stuff or whatever. And somebody says, well, this is the article you got to see on Facebook, and they and I see that the address is blogger. I automatically don't go because there's no way that an authoritative voice is over there at blogger.com. There's just no way in my mind on the things that I follow. If you if you're publishing on that platform, I, um, I'm extremely biased. I might be radically biased, but I am not going to a blogspot.com place to learn anything. And I wager that a lot of people feel that way if you're in a market that have more savvy people uh, in it. If you're selling stuff to people like me, don't, don't even try it on uh, one of those hosted sites because I will not even go. All right, so here's an example. I put this post up last week, and I think it was last Monday or Tuesday. And I geared it toward um, people um, on Google+. Plus. I, I had to bring this site out of mothballs. If you guys have seen the site before, you know it's gone through many design changes, and this is the latest one, and this is about a month old, this new header and everything for, this, for my jackhumphrey.com site. <clears throat> so, Jack, before you go into the details, Take out a clean sheet of paper, everybody. You want to take notes on this one. This is one of the most brilliant examples of quote unquote blogging I have seen in a long, long time. And what Jack's about to share with you can level the playing field for every one of you, even if your website is brand spanking new. OK, continue. Well, crap, that's a lot of pressure. OK. Um, all right, here we go. Is everybody? Can everybody see the actual post? I'm on the web now. Say yes if you uh, uh, over yes. there in chat. You see it? Okay, excellent. All right, so it's kind of it's probably going to be a little bit small because my screen is really huge. But I, uh, uh, you you see the same kind of elements that you saw before. Over here on the left, really small numbers except for Google Plus, and the reason is I I targeted Google Plus, and I targeted Google Plus with everything. In fact, the only comment system I have on my blog is Google Comments. That means that when this guy posted here, he may not have posted here. He may have posted on this thread on Google Plus, but it shows up here in my comments. I used some of his stuff to put this post together. This is a curated post. And I specifically picked out three people. Demi Farnsworth, who, who blogs for copyblogger.com. Chris Lang, who is, a, who is a Jedi master at Google Plus and Google Plus Marketing. 
and all of these guys have really big followings and influence on Google Plus. And you've got someone who has really big following right here with Gina. <laughs> Gina's people. So uh, she's part of Gina's group as well, but she's also, you know, really, really influential on Google Plus. And I knew that I wanted to focus this post on some movers and shakers who could get me what I wanted. I didn't have enough because I had been ignoring this and I wanted to get back in. I wanted to, you know, have a new design. I wanted to talk about new things. I wanted to kind of relaunch jackhumphrey.com and what people followed me for and what they knew me for and all that kind of stuff. In order to do that, I couldn't do it with just my following. I have 11,000 people uh, on Google Plus following me in circles, but just like, not just like, but in the same way that Facebook throttles what people see from me. Uh, if I've been out of action for a while, and so I can post something on Facebook, if I don't post every day, I start not showing up on a bigger percentage of the people who have asked to follow me, um, who've liked my page. And the same kind of thing algorithmically happens on Google+. Plus. So I can go out to my 11,400 people a week before you uh, last, and uh, a lot of them wouldn't have seen anything, and they weren't responding. I had to wake them back up, and I had to do it by knowing that a lot of about 11,000 people are followed or circled or in the circles of these three very influential people. There's a lot of overlap there. So wake them back up so that they see all my stuff. I had to wake them up by getting these guys talking about me on Google+. Plus. Then these guys over here started seeing me through the post these guys were making about this post. It gets kind of crazy when you're in it and when you're doing it, like you put a blog together, you have content and you have and you're running it through Google Plus comment system and this conversation is happening here and on Google Plus, it's it doesn't matter and it's live on both places, then you can start to see how all these interactions add up to you getting hundred and nineteen in this example, people plus wanting. When you get plus one, when your content or you personally get a plus one on a comment that you make on Google, that is a vote. That's an old school, the equivalent of an old school link that you used to get to your site that you get from a directory or something like that, only now those are completely worthless. And these are worth as much as when your directories first started, like DMOs and stuff like that. These are becoming that important. So I have 119 new, brand new votes in my favor on the social media network that's owned by the search engine for the internet from this one piece of content because I called some people out who couldn't resist talking about this because I was talking about their great stuff. And they got to come on and say thank you. And when they do that, they're saying thank you in front of all of their people on Google+. Plus. Thank you, Jack Humphrey, for putting me in here, or this is really great, or whatever, went from all three of these guys to their entire following. With the overlap of the people who follow Chris Lang and me, but who weren't seeing my stuff when I posted because I'd been out of the loop for a little while, they all got woken up, and, and now everything that I post to Google Plus gets a lot more play. It's exactly what I wanted. So now socially, I'm back in. Alta, just putting one post together, and this is the only thing that I wrote personally. That's it. One, two, three, four paragraphs. That's all I wrote. The rest of this stuff, is look how great these guys are. Remember that slide that I just had? Look what this so-and-so person just did. This is what I was talking about. Look what they did. Look what they did. This is all Chris's stuff. I'm embellishing a little bit. I did write some stuff in here. You don't have to, but it sure did make the post better. And for 119 likes in a week, I will take any amount of work that it takes. If it takes all night to do a post like this, I would do it because I know the value of what just happened here. It's Hardcore, very, very important. So there aren't a bunch of yeah. internet marketing. Yeah. We've got Wayne, who's in the work at home job opportunities niche, and he has a blog currently on WordPress.com. I just suggested that he definitely wants to go put up his own WordPress site on his own hosting on his own domain. How can Wayne use exactly what you did here in the work at home job opportunities niche? Well, notice that this post is not about Jack Humphrey consulting. It's not about Jack Humphrey as a faculty member of Directions University. It's not about Jack Humphrey's book, Bending the Web. 
I just made all this stink about jackhumphrey.com, and I just wrote a post that's nothing to do, although it's everything to do, with what I sell. So it's proof positive that the first thing you have to do is tell a story that everybody's interested in. And of course, you're going to want to tell stories about things that people in your niche are interested in that are also going to end up being interested in the products being on your list. So what you have to do is come up with all kinds of ideas, what people, you know, make money, work from home. That's too general. It's way, way too general. There's nobody that's doing very well in work from home, make money online that isn't exorbitantly, like, huge, giant site. The, 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 the giant sites are the only ones who can take care, uh, take advantage of something so generic. So, and the thing is, people aren't really, us marketers are more interested in work from home, make money from home. We want to be able to say those words and have people flood our sites because they're all using that information to find us. But the thing is, they're not. They're using that information to find competitors of yours that you are never going to want to match. You're not going to want to put in the years. You're not going to want to put in the money that it takes to compete for such generic keywords. So you, what you're going to do is get just as much or even more traffic as those guys that they spent all those years and money to get by going long tail, by actually knowing exactly what people want, that they have to put ultimate or, or guide to Google Plus 2013. I know what they want, and I'm giving it to them right here. I just pointed to my screen like you guys can see that. Um, <laughs> um, but I am. I'm pointing at the screen, and I'm saying my people, the people that I want to attract, are very interested in finding out how they can really kill it with Google+. Plus. I'll get to all of my other stuff later, but I know this is a question on their mind. And when they finally get to the point where they're like, man, I need a little extra help, I wonder what Jack does. Consulting. Oh, he consults. I wonder if I can afford him. I wonder what this is. So I'm going to go to the consulting page, or he's got download. Wow, if this post was so good and he got 119 people to, you know, scream to the hills for it, been in the web. I got to go read that. The same thing will happen to you. It doesn't matter that you guys are selling something in particular. Oh, here's another example. Get paid for data processing, data entry from your home. Okay. Here's something even further away from the home. Make money online, or whatever. So they 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 get to see all the stuff that you do. You attracted them with honey, and and you attract them with what they want, not necessarily what they need, but what they want the most. And you'll get to them what they, when they find out what they need, that's where your products and services come in. Once you've got them out of that, you know, idea that whatever the bright and shiny thing they think they want is not exactly what they want or need to succeed or do or get paid or lose weight or whatever it might be, then you're there with your products and services uh, when they're primed and ready for what they need. And they got to that point because you gave them what they wanted, what they were seeking in Google or wherever. So a better example, get paid for data processing, data entry from your home. Well, who wants to get paid for data entry from home? Is it possible that it's uh, predominantly work at home moms and dads? Or, or, or um, you know, what is the demographic? I mean, put glasses on them, put clothes on them. In your mind, make up who this person is. And what are all the things that we're all interested in? Let's start there. Um, if you want to work from home, well, you've got a home. Uh, you might want to do some content that bridges the two things. A lot of people will do content based on, um, you know, what it's like to work at home. What are the problems associated? What are the issues? And here's how I found out how to work with that. I do, I do data entry. Maybe you want to steal some data entry people over to your com com uh, company uh, from the one that they're working on. That's a great demographic to go after. Don't just go after people who just want to learn about doing data entry because they can type 30 words a minute. Go after people who are already in the business and you know you pay better. You're doing recruiting for that. Or you're, you want them to go through your company because you get a commission. Well, then address their needs very directly. What's their life like? What's their daily life like? What are the biggest questions they have? If you put real people in the position of uh, statistics and demographics and uh, market trends and all of that, and you put a real person there, you can really come up with tons of content ideas that will draw people to you just like this guy drew people to me and got people to click on my consulting tab and everything else later. Wow, your data entry uh, place pays, you know, a dollar more an hour than mine. I'm switching over to you. Now you brought somebody you know is going to stay. 
if that's your market, you know. It, there's, no, there's not a niche out there. There's not a single niche out there that this can't be done with. It just takes, you have to go broad until it's off of the focus on your product and onto what are the lives like of the people who would be ending up seeking this product and telling stories that they want to hear. And the only difference between from niche to niche is how broad, how far back you have to go to make sure that the product is the thing that you're leading with in your stories all the time. Because that turns people off. You won't make any sales like we talked about before. Gina, are you still here? I am. Wow. I just had to get Adrana's being all acronymy with me. Work at home. I got it. Wow. Making a sensible wow environment uh, where you aren't in distracted. That would be something that that entry people would be very interested in with that monotonous thing. You know, they've got to get a, an environment set up. Bam, there's a blog post. And don't just do it from your perspective and write the whole post yourself. Go out there and find the people who have written really authoritative pieces on that particular topic, highlight them here, then get them with their significant pull and their network and everything to talk about your new thing because you talked about them. It's very easy to do. Very, very easy to do and to apply to any niche out there. Sorry, Gina. That's okay. Um, one of the DU bachelor students is Jim Gomez, and he and his partner, Z, are on the call today. And Z says they're a little bit challenged for Google+. Plus. Um, he, said he has searched the current authors on San Francisco, and they don't have Google Plus presence. Any advice? His site is now in San Francisco. Um, it's what I would describe as a community portal about San Francisco. It targets both people who live in and around San Francisco and people who visit in and around San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions on what to do if other people in the San Francisco niche do not have a presence in Google Plus yet? Well, I'd start by building a community. Uh, you can do that on Google Plus and you just go right to communities and you do create community. And that will help the people who are on Google Plus already. There's, there's no way that there's nobody there. Absolutely no way. Um, you might find that there's quite a few more than you thought, but you've got to give them a place or some reason to find you. The best way to do that is to go create a community with the keywords that, you're gonna, that people are going to use. Well, I'm in San Francisco. I need to network with a certain kind of person, whatever. They're going to use keywords right up here. Let's go find out how many communities are actually there. Uh, community San Francisco. Oops, I'm searching the wrong thing. It's over here. Oops. We're going to find a lot. It's basically, you know, you know I'm, I'm doing this because we're going to find tons. And you want to get some idea of how many people from uh, San Francisco are here. First place would be to go look at the communities. It's the easiest place. 7,600 members. There's photographers, people that like football team, the Giants, Ingress, just people who play Ingress, San Francisco in general, 433 members. You just start digging into a social network to find out. We're, rather than relying on anything that anybody's ever said about Google Plus, it's dead, it's a ghost town, right here is BS. BS, you know, there's not a lot of members. And, and that's your problem so far. You haven't been able to find a lot of San Francisco activity once you get out of that really big one. But there is activity going here. And then these guys are There's all so much there, Jack. They can really build their entire site with nothing but curated content. Curate mm -hmm. the tennis guy from San Francisco, the 49ers site from San Francisco, all this stuff. San Francisco mm -hmm. parking. I mean, oh my goodness. There, Every piece of content on your now in San Francisco.com site should be curated from all of these people. Well, every single photographer in here are very close to it. There's 7,600 members. A lot of those are going to be photographers. A lot of them are going to have their own site. And a lot of them, because Google Plus is so friendly for photographers, you all should know that. Um, if you didn't, you do now. Photography is huge because pictures are more beautiful on Google Plus than anywhere else, and they can do so much with it. So photographers haven. A lot of these guys are going to have their own websites, and they're going to be very, very well respected by Google uh, in their personal profile. So if one of those guys plus one the post that you make about San Francisco, about 
really great photographs that have been taken in San Francisco in the last 10 days by these guys. You're going to get all those guys' attention by coming here and posting on Google+, Plus, and they're going to link you, and everybody that follows them is going to be in, exposed to your story about the pics that you made of their pictures. And see, that doesn't probably have anything to do with or very little to do with exactly what people are going to end up spending money to do with you. It doesn't have to. It's about San Francisco. And you're about, you've got that core, and then you go from there. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways you can work this. Okay, so there is the taste of um, <laughs> of all of this. I'm going to pause this here. I'm going to get my uh, presentation back up. And um, one second. Let you know that we've done all of this stuff. And I went way over. I'm so sorry uh, uh, that I did that, you guys, that I couldn't be more efficient. But I, this is kind of a newer presentation for me. I haven't worked out all the bugs with it and everything. And, and Don't you dare apologize. There wasn't anything I would have had you cut out, Jack. <laughs> well, don't beat me. But, you know, I, it was the conversation. You guys are asking really great questions, so it's actually your fault, but um, not mine. I, I was going to be done. Yeah, we do things very differently here at DU. For those who have never been in any of our webinars before, we're not going to cut content just because we should keep it down to a time that we set. If there's good stuff and you guys have questions, we are absolutely going to give it all to you. Yeah. Yeah, and there's still always more to go. Um, we could, um, in fact, one of the things that I'm going to give away today um, for everybody who wants to go further with the Blogging Systems Workshop 3, which I'm about to talk about, I'm going to talk about that whole Google Plus stuff that we were doing in that workshop, and I'm also going to give a free uh, extra Google Hangout for it. Um, because I told everybody that you were going to get something really cool that nobody else could get, it's only when you're listening to this as the recording, you can't get on this hangout. And I know everybody who showed up. So it's only those of you who showed up are going to get this. Um, but if you feel like we just scratched the surface on that, you're absolutely right. And the power that comes with it is, is worth getting on another uh, a Google Hangout and talking about it more because you will be able to so skip all the pain and suffering of regular old marketing that's being taught out there right now. Uh, it's so much easier once you get your head around it. You know exactly where to go on Google+, Plus, exactly what to do on your site, how to integrate all that stuff. So that's actually the bonus that I was promising uh, is a webinar. And we'll go on that thing as long as um, Google Hangouts will, will run, <laughs> if we have to, you know, just so you guys all understand. So you'll be able to come bring questions, and I'll let you know more about that. But anyway, this is all leading up to the Blog Systems Workshop. And... Um, uh, that's a, a workshop that we're doing here on the 21st. Is that right, Gina, 21st? 21st and 22nd. It is a Saturday and Sunday. Yep, it's a weekend thing. So we used to do conferences. I even did conferences uh, back in the day in Vegas. Uh, travel is a real expense now. It's not as fun as it used to be, and it's always a pain in the butt compared to just being staying home and doing the same thing. The other thing is I used to send people to Vegas to conferences. They wouldn't get one iota the amount of value that we're doing in this uh, uh, webinar because this is really a training situation. It's not, hey, look at me. I wrote a book. Buy my book and all that crap that you see at the traditional conferences. And it's in the comfort of your own home. All kinds of pluses to this. Um, the course, though, the thing is, is going to go, uh, gosh, I can't remember the hours, but the one day we go, from 9 to 3, and another day we go from 1 to 6, I believe it is, Gina? One day is from, Saturday is 1 to 6, and Sunday is 9 to 6. Ooh, okay, so and we, we do there. get a little challenged at keeping it to 6 o'clock. We sometimes go a little long. Yeah. <laughs> well, if everybody's still cranking away, it's all up to you guys. And, and, you know, it's basically getting to pick the brains of, three people who really have been there, done that, and know exactly how to do stuff that you want to learn how to do. And so if you guys are still going after 6 o'clock on Sunday, I'm sure we would be up for it too. There's going to be breaks, just like regular conferences. Um, you know, everybody goes and stretches. There's a new place to go and get back together online after the breaks are over. 
So it's really and we do a networking lunch, so make sure you get your lunch ready the night before because we hang out all the time during lunch and just get to know one another and interact. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So module one is introduction to relationship building systems. A lot of stuff we've talked about today in a cursory as much as we could in the time allotted, but much more deeply here, doing market research and know what your audience is buying. I said that was important like five times that I, I would get into that today. There's no way. That's that's something that needs a little bit of, once you know that, though, you're golden. Understanding your audience's levels of awareness, and Gina takes you through a process of understanding what, what that even means, the levels of awareness, and understanding how to talk to each of those levels, people in those different contexts of their lives or wanting to know about a product or wanting to know about certain kinds of information very, very important so you know who you're talking to when you hit them with the kind of content that they need or hopefully the exact content that they need. Uh, module two is an introduction to blogging. I talked about a lot of things today that might have gotten you guys a little bit confused. You know, I said you have to do WordPress and you might not have WordPress yet or you might not have a WordPress on your own blog. Don't worry about that. That's all going to be covered in a way that everybody brand new to this stuff can understand as well. Uh, setting up your opt-in system. A lot of times I talk about, uh, you know, uh, subscribers and opt-in rates and 70% this and whatever, and what's an autoresponder do exactly? How do I set that up so that it really, really rocks out? Well, whose service do I use? All that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we cover the deeper parts of these things that you certainly uh, would have some questions about after today. Uh, plugins and how or, how WordPress works in general and how to get it SEO properly so that it works for you every time you make a post you rank is the goal. It doesn't always happen. Uh, I used to I, I used to think I was going to trademark a post and rank because I had a system that I virtually understood. Almost every time I posted on Friday Traffic Report, I ranked for a keyword that was written about in that post. You learn that stuff. SEO for bloggers, all the stuff that you need to know. It looks even more complicated than it actually is because we went over a significant portion of, of the idea behind how SEO is done today. Uh, you'll get that filled in in Module 3 with all the details that you need, Google authorship to advanced stuff, linking, optimizing content, keyword research, all that kind of stuff. Very, very important. You'll never have to do anything else again other than take refresher courses after that because this does change. Um, but there's an option for that as well uh, within the Blogging Systems Workshop. Writing content that drives traffic and sales. Uh, we covered a little bit of that in my last example about exactly what I did to drive traffic and, of course, my site's designed to, to generate sales. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't able to point out every single way that that happens, but you saw that I, I do consulting. I have an opt-in list. I have all these things to uh, promote. Uh, and the first thing is to get people in there and really loving you before that before that opt-in happens. Uh, so, and that is really, really good content. You're going to have worksheets. You're going to have, um, you know, deep sessions on why relevancy matters and uh, how to deal with images and why to use images and when to use images and how to use them so that they're good for your search engine optimization as well. Where do you get them? Um, how do you use them in WordPress? How do you plug them in? You know, all that stuff that is going to come up at some point. And for those of you who have been doing this for a while, guaranteed you're going to learn new stuff that you didn't know about all of this stuff. Uh, because it changes all the time. And, and you don't have time to run your business and keep up with it in the way that we do, uh, because that's our business. Driving traffic with your blog. Six simple steps to process, uh, process for driving traffic. Planning your daily blogging system. Planning your weekly blogging system. Basically, your, your editorial calendar. Outsourcing the tactical side of blogging. Um, you don't, we're not advocates of you having to become geeks at all. And if you don't want to, if you only want to have a certain level of understanding of what goes on with the, the publishing end of your site on a technical level and then outsource the rest, that's perfectly fine. Absolutely perfectly fine. It's not okay to outsource your content all the time. There are certain very specific cases where it's okay, but that's not the kind of outsourcing we're talking about. Setting up your social accounts, tying them to your blog, you know, integrating like we talked about in the presentation. Membership sites in Module 6, why are they important? The tools for building membership sites, creating a look and feel for it, 
uh, strategy for improving lifetime value for customer using WordPress membership sites, meaning how long you keep a customer on, how much money on average you make per customer for all your product line, not just your membership, uh, but everything that you sell, and having the LT uh, uh, being as high as, as absolutely possible is the goal. So how to get the most out of every customer that you get and keep them around forever. Getting bigger results and knowing your metrics. Tracking your results with Google Analytics. Super simple. Once you get that done, it's easy to go through it. It's exciting. And you're flying blind without it. You can't do anything without Google Analytics. And there is no other way to watch what's going on on your site. I know there are, and you guys can start typing them if you want, but I'm just saying there is no other way. Hint, hint, don't bother with anything else. You need to know what certain things about Google Analytics, though, to, to use it right. Deciding how much traffic you need and putting a plan together to get it. Letting your metrics tell you what to do, i.e., Google Analytics. You know, if this, then that, now what do I do? And so basically, you know now it's a content marathon. And we put the value at this at 997, totally arbitrary. For some of you, this would be worth tens of thousands of dollars. For some of you, it would be worth, uh, you know, whatever it's worth to you, it's going to have a really significant value because you're going to get something out of it. You're going to be able to turn right around and make your business go nuts. That's basically what the whole point of this is. <clears throat> so for this live event, just today, just right now, it's not 247 That's the regular price. It's 197 And you can go and get this workshop and everything that I mentioned, all those modules, and probably some extra stuff because there's going to be bonuses too. But we just went through exactly the out job itself. So just because you guys are on this webinar, another cool thing other than my, my bonus, my free bonus, just for showing up live, is that you're going to save a whole bunch of money. Um, today it was 247. It's 247 for anybody who lands on that page, but not for you guys. So it's bypnow.com/bsw for all of that stuff for a whole weekend. If you were to go to South by Southwest, you're not going to learn anything like this at South by Southwest. You're going to go to any conference in the world. Forget about air travel. Forget about all that stuff. <laughs> Just to get in the door, you're looking at minimum 500 bucks to thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on what kind of conference you're going to. And again, uh, if you guys have been to this, you know this. You know these kinds of things. If you've been to them, you don't learn as much as you think you're going to. Great for networking, awesome parties, not really something that you want to, you know, base your business on. That's all this is focused on, and it's only 197. Hey, we save money too because. We get to teach this from home. That's one of the reasons the price is so low. So don't look at scant at that price like, oh, that's too low to have the value. It has great, great value. Uh, it's just that we can put this on more cheaply because we don't rent out the Sands Hotel and do all this other junk that people do when they have conferences and travel. A lot of you guys can't even travel very easily. So this makes total sense uh, to have a pricing uh, at this level. 247, 197, and here are the bonuses. Gina, you want to talk about this bonus? Sure. So, this bonus. We have a team of strategy session coaches, and Jack, Ken, and I also do strategy sessions. Basically, what we do is we get together with you for anywhere from a half hour to an hour on a time thing, and we help take a look at where you're at right now, where you want to be in the next one to three years, and we work together to build a plan that will help you go from where you're at to where you want to be. I cannot tell you how valuable this is, because it, it really is looking at your business strategically. It's not about helping you figure out your to-do list. It's really figuring out the bigger picture stuff of what's it going to take to really accomplish what you want. The value on this is $1,997. I charge $997 an hour when I do consulting. It is yours free when you take up the ticket to the Block Systems Workshop 3. Ain't that cool. OK, and then tell them about the 30-day IM challenge, which is bonus number two, the goal of the membership. This is a really significant bonus for you guys. 
right now there is two different versions of the challenge. There's a free membership, there's a gold membership. But as soon as the workshop is over, that's going to go away. And there will only be a membership that is $19.95 a month. You guys can get in right now as a gold member, the paid level of membership, for life as a bonus when you come into the Blog Systems Workshop 3. Now, this is a very interesting program. There are 17 lessons, all of them waiting for you right this minute in a members area. They're delivered every few days over a period of about 34 days. In addition to the lessons, there are weekly calls. I have people that have been coming to these calls for years because of what they get out of them. I call them a hug seat, a little bit more positive form of a hot seat. And what we do is similar to a strategy session. In a group setting, one person volunteers to be on the hug seat. And over the course of about two hours, we look at where they're at right now, who they are as a person, where they want to be in the next one to three years, and we work together to build the plan for how to go from where they're at to where they want to be. We look at where the money's going to come from, where the traffic's going to come from, what they need to do to really get the results that they want to happen. Because we have so many different businesses, some for-profit, some non-profit, so many different niches, every single week is another example that really helps you see things in a different light. If you were paying for that, it's a value of about 180 bucks per year. But you guys are getting in it for life, so it's hard to put a value on it. And for a few years, it would be around $494, but again, Grab your ticket to Blog Systems Workshop 3 and your lifetime gold member. Awesome. And bonus number three, 21 days to blogging profits. It's a multimedia course, and I suspect that the value is very conservative at $97, but tell them a little bit about that. It really is. There are many components to this particular course. There is the main PDF with screenshots and whatnot of more how to set up WordPress and what to do in driving the traffic after you're posting to your blog. Pretty much anything and everything you need to build a blogging system is in that PDF. There is also a second PDF called Red Hot Traffic that talks about many different content marketing strategies. Article marketing, talking in communities and groups and social media, um, you name it, it's probably in Red Hot Traffic. And then there are many different video and audio recordings. There are checklists. There are flowcharts. It really is a comprehensive program for how to get started with WordPress and really how to set things up in a way that's going to drive traffic that both builds your list and converts to sales. It is a very conservative $97. Um, I think altogether it's something over 300 pages of PDFs, probably over six to eight hours of videos, and I can't even count how many checklists, flowcharts, etc. Awesome. I, I started to answer Wayne there um, at that last one. You might want to take a look at that. Well, I explain bonus number four. Um, remember, that G plus stuff that we talked about, you guys might have and you should have actually even if you're really experienced um, you gotta have somebody who keeps up with Google Plus all the time they probably changed something in Google Plus in the time that we've been talking today it's really really a fast-moving environment and lots of opportunity to take a lot of um, advantage where people just don't know what they're supposed to be doing there and again so many people are doing things the wrong way they're blowing off Google Plus like well my market's not there like it is on Facebook or where else, so I'm not going there. Biggest mistake marketers are making online today right now is ignoring or not doing the right things with Google Plus. Over any other mistake that you could possibly be making, to me, that's the biggest one. And so what I started talking about today, I'm going to do a special session for everybody that's here today. Um, and the value of 197, I don't know, that's just stupid. The value is invaluable. You're learning how to work with Google to show up in Google search and to get the social signals that you need for Google to rank.
thank you for practice. Really, it's, it's crazy more valuable than that. Um, so we put the course value at 997, and the value of all three bonuses, completely arbitrary numbers, or it's way too low. Um, they're, they're certainly not too high at all. It's not hype at all. Uh, 2588, that's 3585. And anybody else who comes to this page, bypnow.com slash BSW, 